just so much of addictions is, is definitely that numbing out, like just, but, but again, I go back to the fact that it's, it's the person's coping mechanism because they have no other option. So if you're saying the remedy is to go ahead and feel that's a scary place for a lot of us. You know, we feel like we don't have the resources to feel because we might never recover or we might just totally lose control and have a meltdown. And who's going to then take care of us? Who's then going to, you know, do my job, take care of the kids. Like they don't have the resources to feel. They don't have the luxury to feel. It's not, not only is it not safe, but they just wouldn't even be able to function. So what would you say to someone like that? Like, I, I don't want to feel it's, I, I'm going to die or, or I won't be able to function if I feel. Right. So, you know, a lot of that is rooted obviously in fear. And, you know, one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite teachers is uh, Osho. And Osho, I read one of his books called Fear. And he says, there's only three fears that we actually have the fear of death, the fear of being alone, and the fear of going crazy. And every fear that we have boils down to one of those three. So one thing I actually did when I read that book is, okay, let me devote time to each one of those three each day. Let me spend time alone with myself so I know there's no part of me that I'm trying to avoid. Let me allow myself to go crazy through breath work, ecstatic dance, whatever it is that allows you to take those control mechanisms and really let them go in a controlled setting, right? We don't want to do anything that's harmful or dangerous, but really allowing yourself, whatever practice it might be, there's so many spiritual practices that involve the ecstatic expression, the unimpeded expression of your body or your breath or whatever it is. So allowing yourself that control time to just go crazy. And the third is the fear of death. So for me, exploring what death means to me, exploring the part of me that is not bound by life or death, and exploring what part of me actually dies, which is really, you know, Ramda says the only thing that can die in is an, is an illusion. That truth can never die. So the truth of you, which is really just pure awareness, pure consciousness, is not bound by the bookcase of life and death, the bookend of life and death. And when you can really find that place of stillness and really, you know, that's why a lot of the spiritual teachings say to die before you die is really when you allow yourself to go through the death process and things like, you know, meditation or even something more extreme like plant medicine. Once you go through that death process, you realize that you start connecting to the part of you that is really just eternal awareness. And when you can connect to that, then it makes it a lot easier to let go and to begin to let go and realize that the parts of you that you've been holding on to are really the illusory parts of you that are not really based in reality. They're a construct that we've created, right? That's the, the personality or the, uh, the persona that we've weared for so long, a lot of the meditation and the plant medicine and all those ceremonies is really learning how to let go of that mask and let go of that persona. And when you allow yourself to feel, you realize that no matter what, the truest essence of my being can never be bound by life and death. Mm -hmm.